In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation? Amen. Don't you just love those gospel readings? I never knew you, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. I make a lot of mistakes as a husband, a plethora of mistakes, I'm sure most husbands do. But I've made one throughout my entire marriage, which isn't too long, only a mere seven years thus far. But for every single day of my marriage, my wife has asked me to do one, well, many things that I don't do, but one thing is to not stack dishes in the sink. It's just something that she doesn't like because they pile up and it gets dirty and dirty. It's just so easy to put it in the dishwasher or rinse it off real quick and put it up. Now, many warnings come with what will happen if I continue this bad habit and don't stop. <laughs> but my wife hasn't left me yet because of this. She hasn't upgraded me or traded me in for a better model. She endures my inadequacies. She endures my shortcomings, my deafness. Usually when we hear this text today of the ten virgins, we hear it and we think, well, I best make sure that I have oil in my lamp so that when Christ comes back, I will be ready. I have to do something. I have to make a change. And then I will be ready for either Christ to return on the last day or for my own death. I will be ready. It's a problem with that, though. Just like the dishes, you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. You don't heed the warning of your Lord Jesus Christ, nor do I. We wait for it to be the last minute, but the problem is with that last minute, it's just too Late. Imagine if this past Sunday you waited for the siren to go off. You waited to hear it in the air where the problem was. It was coming too fast to wait that long. I'm wondering in here, is there anybody who is brain dead? Anybody? No, because you're all here breathing. So you can look into the sky and see hail the size of baseball. Lightning and thunder, rain going sideways and winds of 60 miles an hour. And what will that tell most of us to do who have any sense about us? Go into the basement or go into an interior room. Would most of you go onto your roof and hold up a golf club? No, because you're not dumb. I believe that. I think you all are smart people. You know? So, if we're not ignorant, then it must be that we're rejecting, we're disregarding. Because the end times are upon us, brothers and sisters, dear little flock. Take about a month ago, the Iowa Democratic Party, what a bunch of good people, prayed for abortions. They prayed to our Father in heaven saying, Father, thank you for the grace and mercy you've given us in performing 45 million safe abortions. 
over the last 30 years. They're actually praying to God, thanking Him. A teacher in Ohio was fired for having a picture of one of our presidents praying and refused to take it down. And he held to intelligent design. So they let him go. And then he lost in court. Tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes destroying entire countries. These things are happening. <laughs> and then we get into your own devils, your own demons. That own little personal demon that's been assigned to just torment you day and night. Those things you may not even know you're doing. Or even worse, that you know, but justify. For isn't that what we do when we make mistakes? Do we just confess and repent? No. What we do is we come up with reasons. What do I do when my wife goes off? Well, she doesn't go off on me. She educates me pat compassionately. I justify the dishes in the sink. Well, you don't understand. This was going on, so this had to happen. A million reasons as to why we continue doing what we do. And the oil dries up. We burn that oil in our own justifications. In our love for this world. We can't hear the call of the Holy Spirit because we have the music of this world turned up too loud. We can't confess our Lord Christ and His love because the vain lies of this world stain every inch of our mouth. So the problem is with those empty promises and lofty goals that we set, they will fail. So just repent and receive some oil. My father confessor called the church an oil distribution center where you come to receive oil. The oil isn't made here. The oil isn't sold here. It's just given out here. For your lamp was empty, completely dried up. But then your loving Father called you by the Holy Spirit here. Taking you into the hands of a sinful man and drowned you forever. Your sin, the old Adam, drowned and died in the waters of holy baptism. There was your lamp filled to the brim with oil enough to store. But that oil dried up again. And the problem is, we try to understand God according to our own ways. People can mess up enough and eventually we will just disregard them. Mess up once, maybe. Seven times, maybe. But continue doing the same mistake over and over again. And I am not going to forgive you. I'm not going to do things for you. But isn't it good that our Father isn't like that? That our Heavenly Father is not like us. And even better, that our Lord Jesus Christ is not like us. For you have, something has to happen for you to get that oil. If you've ever noticed, olive oil is not just a jar filled with a bunch of olives. To get that oil, that olive must be crushed. Must be smeared and matted in an olive press. So was our Lord Christ. Pressed, crushed for us. And outflowed oil. In order that the lamp may continue burning. 
For out of the side of Christ and from his whole entire body flowed his righteousness, not a percentage of his righteousness and holiness, but the fullness, everything on the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ was completely drained. And in the process, filled up with our sin. So that we may receive his righteousness. So that when we continue to mess up, when we make those mistakes, when we sin over and over and over again, we are forgiven. Because what comes after baptism, Christ doesn't abandon us. No, he sends another sinful person, either your pastor or that nearest believer. For as Luther said, forgiveness is as close as your neighbor's mouth. You receive holy absolution. For which is more important, confession or absolution? Well, that's a no-brainer. Absolution is. You can confess your sin day and night and all the time, but if your Father does not love you, if He is not merciful, then it doesn't matter. But He is. Therefore, you are forgiven. And though we fill ourselves up every day, which all of you will do this Thursday, filling yourself up because you're a bunch of gluttons, as am I. Isn't it funny how long we've been planning our Thanksgiving meal? I mean, do you realize how weird that is to plan a meal in advance like this? It's just silly. Go to Africa and say, I'm planning a meal two weeks from now. They're going to laugh at you. They just want breakfast. But we fill ourselves up either on the temporal food of this world or we devour one another, devour each other in our gossip, our slander, our hate, our vengeance, our jealousy. We devour each other and it never satisfies, does it? Are you ever satisfied when you gossip or when you lie or when you're angry? No. There's no satisfaction there. But there is here. For here you receive the food of immortality, the eternal bread, and the immortal wine for your salvation. As we gather round the banquet hall, as we gather around the radiant throne, Christ feeds us his body and blood, the blow that from from his side into the chalice now passes over your lips and you are absolved. It's better than any mouthwash to cleanse out that sinful mouth of yours. What great gift it is. So take heart, you virgins wise, you who are burdened, you who are persecuted, you who are In tribulation, take heart. Our opening hymn, Wake, O Wake, for Night is Flying, was written by St. Philip Nikolai in 1597. Nikolai was a Lutheran pastor. And that year, Nikolai buried over a thousand of his own sheep because of a plague that had gone through. A thousand. That's three times the size of this church. He had to bury. He didn't write, wake awake for night is flying in a time of temporal peace, of temporal satisfaction, of happiness. He wrote it in deep spiritual anguish and torment of the devil. But from that flowed one of the most glorious hymns of what our Lord Christ does for us. That He loves us so much that He actually wakes us up. He doesn't let us keep sleeping. He wakes us up. Arise, my beloved, for I am coming. I am here. I am yours. And that's what the entire liturgy is all about. From the invocation to the benediction, it is your Father, your, the Son and the Holy Spirit saying to you, I love you. The liturgy is the most fantastic love letter ever written and not some Nicholas Sparks fruity love letter, not that gooey stuff that my wife likes watching or some of you ladies may, whatever. Not that junk that doesn't really mean anything. I mean 
sacrificial, uncompromising, unconditional love. That no matter how far we run, no matter how much we kick and scream, no matter how much we say, I hate you, I don't want to see you, Christ says, I forgive you. I love you. You are a pure virgin because of me. So take heart, little flock, for what did St. Paul say? You are not sons of the devil. You are not children of darkness. No, he says, for you are children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Take heart then, little flock. Christ forgives you. Don't forget, He didn't die for Himself. He died for you. He loves you. Blessed are you, wise virgins. For this day your oil is filled up. The bridegroom soon indeed will call us. And soon we will feast in eternal paradise with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come now, Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.